Karabakh is reeling today after the authorities there reported last night that Azerbaijan had cut the region's natural gas supply. Azerbaijan's blockade of the only road connecting Karabakh and Armenia is now in its third day. The sole pipeline supplying gas to Karabakh runs from Armenia through territories ceded to Azerbaijan at the end of the 2020 war. The weather is forecast to dip to the mid-30s Fahrenheit in Stepanakert this evening. Civilnet's team in Karabakh reported seeing large crowds of Stepanakert residents queuing for fuel today. In response to the gas cut, Karabakh's education ministry announced that, starting today, classes would be indefinitely suspended in all schools using gas for heating. Schools using wood or electricity for heating remain open. The school closures come amid growing concern over a mounting humanitarian crisis in the region. Karabakh's health ministry has confirmed that patients in critical condition cannot be transferred to better equipped hospitals in Armenia due to the blockade. Meanwhile, doctors in Stepanakert are warning that Karabakh's medical centers have only a matter of days before critical medicines start running out. In the meantime, negotiations to reopen the Goris Stepanakert Highway continue, the Russian peacekeeping mission in Karabakh confirmed last night. The peacekeepers have explicitly blamed Azerbaijan for blocking the road. Azerbaijan has denied closing the road, falsely claiming that the Russian peacekeepers are the ones blocking it. Last night saw international condemnation of the blockade begin to pour in, with the European Union and United States both issuing calls for Azerbaijan to unblock the Goris Stepanakert Highway. France also released a statement urging for the road to be reopened, but did not explicitly call on Azerbaijan to unblock it. A group of Azerbaijanis presenting themselves as environmental activists began blocking the road Monday morning, effectively cutting off Karabakh's Armenians from the outside world. It already marks the longest stretch of time the road has been closed since the end of the 2020 war, which saw Russian peacekeepers take control of the route. A civil net investigation has found that many of the quote-unquote activists are in fact connected with government-organized non-governmental organizations in Azerbaijan. None of the organizations work on environmental issues. Azerbaijan's ongoing blockade of Karabakh comes amid a notable spike in rhetoric from Azerbaijan about the issue of Karabakh's mining industry. Over the weekend, a group of Azerbaijanis attempted to enter the premises of two mining operations in Karabakh, called Dermbon and Kashen, but they were blocked by mine employees and residents of nearby villages. The authorities in Karabakh said they had not been given advance warning of the Azerbaijanis' attempted visits to the mines. Baku has sent Moscow a diplomatic protest note calling on the peacekeepers to ensure unhindered access to mines in Karabakh, while Azerbaijan's ecology and economy ministries have claimed they reached a deal with the Russian peacekeepers to conduct monitoring missions at Karabakh's mines. A separate civil net investigation has found that the Azerbaijani government signed a deal this year with a company called Anglo-Asian Mining that gives the company the right to extract metals from Kashen, one of the two mines targeted over the weekend. John H. Sununu, former President George H.W. Bush's chief of staff, sits on the company's board of directors.